Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey, folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn, and I'm excited today because I have two great guests with me, Christy Martin and Beth Pittman. Both of these guys are from Skills Lab Training, and I actually connected with them a while back, and I forget exactly how we met, but they are uh, recruiters. And with my background in recruiting and, and my experience in a former life as a recruiter, I've always had an affinity to talk to other recruiters and kind of gain insight from them on things that they're doing. And these guys come out of Cameron Smith and Associates where they currently work. And they discovered one of the biggest needs that I've seen for years in the in in a industry. And that's simply training young people to be adequately prepared to enter the workforce with confidence. And that's what both Beth and Christy do at Skills Lab Training. And so without further ado, Christy Martin, Beth Pittman, welcome to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. Good. Thank you for having us. Well, you make us sound really good. Thank you. (laughs) No, that's no problem. I mean, again, like I said, it is something that is near and dear to my heart, right? And it's it's simply how do we equip the next generation to, you know, to work in the workforce period? And I think a lot of times we just figure, oh, well, so-and-so, they'll figure it out. And, you know, you guys, I don't know your ages and that doesn't really matter, but I know I'm 51. I always tell my age because I'm not afraid of it. But the reality is, is that I learned some things at a young age that I know a lot of kids today are not learning. And that's just the reality of it. And so I would love for you guys, both of you and Beth, I'll let you go first. Why don't you tell our audience, because we always do this, your superhero origin story and how you got to the place that you are right now with Skills Lab Training. Yeah. So I started with Walmart, actually, as an internal recruiter for Walmart and doing hires for them and worked for them for seven years, all in different areas. And then when I left Walmart, I went to work at a third party firm with Cameron. And we really worked with mid to upper level executives that were looking for opportunities. And so what we did was really kind of have seen over the course of our time at Cameron is that we'd have clients that would reach out to us and say, hey, you know, I've got a kid who's in high school that's looking for their first job or is in college that's finishing up and they don't know what they're going to do with their next steps. Can you talk to them and give them some job search tips or some interview tips? And so we started kind of doing that on the side because Cameron doesn't, didn't work with college and high school um, students. So we started doing that. It worked out really well. And so Christy and I were kind of tossing around the idea. And I said, you know, there, there might be something here. There might be an opportunity here for us to kind of start our little side venture. And as it grew, we really saw that there is a need that kids are coming out of high school and going into college are a little bit confused. They don't have all the answers and they shouldn't. I mean, who did when they were 18? And so we're really trying to help them along, trying to make decisions like, is college right for me? And then also, if you're not going to college, what are you going to do? Are you looking at the right opportunities? Are you pursuing the right interest? And really trying to understand what that looks like. And so we had found that just sitting down and having conversations, coachings with them, 
students are really feeling more confident coming out of that. And it was a great opportunity to really help them with their next steps. And so since we are recruiters, we know what that looks like with hiring managers. We know what they're looking for. So it was easy. It was an easy transition for us. Yeah, I can imagine. That's kind of my story. <laughs> Christy, why don't you want to piggyback on that and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So Beth and I followed some similar career paths and that's how we met. We met when I was also a recruiter at Walmart uh, corporate office. And so we had made that initial connection there working together. She moved on and I moved on to some different stages in life and then came back together at Cameron Smith and Associates. And so we really have a lot of years and expertise in working with professionals to take that next step in their career. And as she said, just saw this kind of gap in the market around we were helping professionals find their next step and prepare for those next steps, whether that be with resumes or interview skills or some coaching around what what path to follow. And that there was these people coming out of high school and college that just weren't getting that same preparation. And so really decided, hey, we could take our skills from working with professionals and take that down to this generation that really eager and excited to get to the next stage. And they're very, most of the time we find some, a lot of them are very aware that they need some planning and they need some preparation and they want to make the right choices. And so helping those people, but then also helping those students that are just a little confused. And I think we have a heart for that because we have seen so many professionals work through their career and maybe get to a stage where they're not happy with how they began and what they've been doing and they want to make a change. And so the opportunity to help people prepare earlier in life, we just naturally have a heart to do that and set those people up for success and to do something that they're really passionate about and interested in and is going to be a lifelong pursuit. So, yeah. I love that. I absolutely love that. I mean, I think it, it is so needed in this day and age. And I'm always telling people, anyone that will listen to me, that is, we need to prepare the next generation. And it's not being done enough with like forethought, with intentionality. And of course, you know, as recruiters, we've all seen it. And and then we even see it in people that are 35, 40 years of age that have been in the workforce for a while. They still struggle with some of the basic things. And we're like, man, you didn't figure that out. And and so, I mean, some of us get it. Some of us don't. Everybody gets it kind of at a, everybody comes to an understanding of what should be done and how things should be done at a certain point in time in their lives. And so I have teenagers in my house. I have two and I have a 11, a 10 year old. And that, you know, I'm constantly harping on them to focus on the little things that really do add up to bigger things. Relationship building, the importance of writing thank you notes, which like, you know, that's like heresy. You ask a child, you ask a Gen Z to write a thank you note. That's like, what is that? You know, I mean, if I can I snap it? No, you can't snap it. <laughs> it's not something that you'll send a Twitter message on. You have to physically get out a pen and paper and write a note. But it's these little things that sometimes we take for granted, those of us that are of a certain age range, that you just figure, oh, well, that's common sense or everybody knows that. And, and the reality is, is that everybody doesn't know that. And I think that's really where skills lab training comes in, because you guys can honestly fill in the gap and the learning gap that a lot of young people have when it comes to preparedness for the workforce. And to that point, Randy, we find that parents, often feel the burden of that preparation for their teenagers or for their students. They feel like, well, I've got a successful career. I went through college or I made my way in life. And so that is my responsibility to guide my student through that stage in their life. And, you know, why would I seek out any help or is there even any help to seek out in that realm? But that's something that I did. And so I should be helping my students through that and not even thinking to look for an outside resource or that there there could be a value in getting kind of a neutral voice or opinion or third party to come in. But so often when we would, you know, look to bring in a tutor for math or an ACT prep or a pitching coach for baseball, those would be instant things that we would go and seek help with. But as parents, we often feel like, oh, it's my responsibility and I will guide my students through that. And sometimes there's a lot of frustration, a lot of confusion, a lot of conversations that are getting shut down. <laughs> so that's where we come in and try and help with those. And we found that using a neutral voice in that is very helpful for some families. Yeah, no, without a doubt. And, you know, as, as I'm sitting here listening to you say that, Christy, all I can think of is that my 16-year-old, A, first of all, he thinks he knows it all. 
And then B, yeah. he doesn't want to listen. You know, I'm an, I'm an idiot as far as as far as his dad is concerned. <laughs> I mean, no, he doesn't think I'm an idiot, but he he thinks he has it all figured out. And I think the reality sometimes is I find that like I've tried to teach him a number of you know personal skills. I've tried to teach him basketball, but I have found that when I interject a or inject a third party into the mix, somebody else that is not me. He tends to be more open to hearing from them. Same with my my ten year old. He I got a soccer coach for him to specifically work on certain things. But I think it's important sometimes to have that third party that can come in and speak to your children specifically about the things that they should do. While it is my responsibility, I think the responsibility in me is to make sure a understand how my child learns, and then you know what's the best method for me to expose to him so that he can become the best version of himself. And if that means sending him to a program like Skills Lab Training or, you know, to any finishing program from that, for that perspective, you know, as a parent, I, I need to be doing that. Otherwise, I may be considered derelict in my duty. Well, and we're, we also, you know, we like to give a shout out to the guidance counselors at school, the high schools and the colleges. They are doing a great job, but they, they are having a hard time meeting with every single student one-on-one and trying to get them prepared into their next step. So what we like to do is come along beside them and help supplement what they're already doing and helping with. And when someone comes and goes to a coaching session or a workshop with us, you know, the parent is the one who has, you know, paid for that service. We like to give the parents feedback and information and homework that they can work with their student and next steps, talking points, what that looks like so that it's a fully partnership relationship because we know how difficult it can be as having teenagers myself and doing this for a living. You know, my daughter thinks that I don't know what I'm doing. So it would be, it's very funny to see how the parent has no knowledge, but yet if I brought Christy in, you know, who has the exact same skills that I do, you know, she's a genius. So I'm like, you know, we have to do what we have to do to keep our kids successful and self-sufficient is what we want. Yeah. So I'm curious to know what has been the feedback that you've received from parents that have brought you guys alongside of them to help their young, the young people in their households to become better and to kind of prepare for things as they move forward. I think the biggest feedback that we've gotten is that we've opened up conversation for the parents and students so that, that we've kind of removed some barriers, I guess. The student may have heard a few things from us that they also heard from their parents. And so that reviews, removes some barriers to go back and realize that their parent does know what they're talking about. And hey, I had this expert tell me something very similar. And so we're totally fine with that. If we're kind of reiterating and then that just removes a barrier at home, we've given some feedback that has just allowed some more meaningful conversations and maybe some just kind of leaders for the parent to have with that student to kind of drive the conversation a little bit further, which is completely our goal. We want to, we want the conversations to continue at home. And we want the thought processes to continue after we leave that session with a student. I think one of the other things is sometimes we offer some clarity to what the student is experiencing. We're seeing students that are really avoiding parents, not wanting to talk about their future, especially during this COVID time. They don't want to go to college, but they don't know what they want to do. And the parents are like, what do you want to do? We need to know. We need to know. And And so once we sit down and talk to a teen, we figured out that they don't know what they want to do either and that they're scared. And the thing that we're able to do is, again, like Christy said, open up that conversation, identify some of the things that if you're deciding not to go to college this year, but you want to go to college, what can you do in the meantime to help you continue to prepare for that or to get you set up in in another area? Maybe that's go straight to work. Maybe that's a gap year. Maybe that's interning. That could be a number of things that they have not really thought about or maybe thought about, but don't know how to go about and do that. And so we, we're we definitely having things sharper focus, having parents really get some clarity about what's going on with their kid. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm curious to know, what are you hearing from young people? Obviously, you, know, we're, you don't have to mention names, of course, but just to the overall tenor of the conversations that you're having with young people right now in the midst of the pandemic is as we record this, it's, it is currently February of 2021. And I know that a lot of young people see a lot of challenges up ahead. And I'm just curious to know how you guys are navigating 
though that uncertainty that I'm sure a lot of young people feel because adults feel it. So, I mean, that's just the reality of the case. Absolutely. Well, a lot of kids want to go to college because they want to experience the whole college experience, not just to get a degree. They want to go to parties. They want to go join a fraternity. They want to do all, they want to live on campus. They want to be independent from their parents. And they're seeing that that's not really an option with COVID or it, things are loosening up and, and different things are happening. And colleges are, and universities are doing a great job right now of trying to keep their students safe. So there is some confusion. And the thing that I'm hearing is that they don't necessarily want to live at home. They've been there for 18 years and they're ready to try and do something different. They don't know what that looks like. And parents want them to have the full experience, but they don't want to have them just go to college out of their bedroom. So it's, it is the confusion of trying to find out where, what works best for them. How are they going to take college tours? How are they going to find out more about colleges? All of the stuff. So we're seeing that we're just having to navigate that a little bit differently, just like all the adults are, you know? Yeah, no. And as I'm sitting here hearing you say that, I'm thinking about an article I read recently in the Wall Street Journal about more 30-somethings are moving back in with their parents. So it's almost like, you know, it's people, young people are looking for that happy medium, right? And some are able to find it outside of the nest egg or the home, if you will. And then others make their way back to the home to kind of recalibrate, if you will, and figure out what their next steps are. So I think it's, it's just, it's just a very interesting time, I think, for young people specifically. And I'm, I'm speaking not so much for millennials, but more the Gen Z, the young people that you're really encountering that are just trying to figure it out. And I think Gen Z is, what, 90, 98, 99 to 2012 or 13, somewhere around there. They're their first truly native digital generation. These kids are mm-hmm. smart to begin with. So they learn. Smart. They're, they're really smart. And sometimes they are a little mistrusting of authority. And so that's a real challenge that you guys have to overcome. Yes. And well, and there's everything is at their fingertips. So if they're trying to find out some information, they'll just YouTube it. I mean, there's college tours. They'll follow, you know, they'll follow people at their colleges to find out which, you know, they can find information. It's at their fingertips. So they're smart. They're resourceful. They know what they want. They just sometimes that maturity level is not there yet, you know, as we all know. But yeah, we're seeing that. Yeah. I'm interested to find out, you know, and I know a couple of your services you have on your website listed um, career planning, personal branding, resumes, job search and interview skills, networking and goals and job advancement. So you cover the gamut. I'd be curious to know what your how you guys focus on the personal branding piece of it. Christy, if you want to just share some of your thoughts Mm -hmm. on that, I'd love to hear. How you, because I know how I deal with personal branding, but I, I want to know what you're saying to these 15, 16, 17 year olds about personal branding. Right, right. Well, and to best point, they, this generation is so tech savvy and they are, they feel like, and we as adults, we feel like they are the experts in social media. And so we're, a lot of our conversation about personal branding focuses on how are you branding yourself online? And then how is that going to come across and portray you to older generation that is are the ones that are hiring you and that are giving you an acceptance into a university and looking at you for a job promotion? And so we're, first of all, defining personal branding for them, which is that how the world is seeing you from an online standpoint, from an in, in-person first impression standpoint, and then from a networking mentor, how are you you know, building yourself out standpoint. So helping them to see that big picture and then helping them to dig into all those different elements around what is your social media saying about you? What are you posting online? What's even online that you don't know is on there? How do you find those things out? How do you clean those things up before you really kind of bite you uh, during a job interview or a college interview or something like that? And then how do you start building a personal brand that you want to show someone in these situations. So helping them to just kind of think down the road a little bit and and take some proactive steps to get things on a track that they they want them to be on and and not not get to where they're 25 trying to get a promotion at work and things are coming back to haunt them. (laughs) Yeah, we also talk about how personal brand ties in with networking and how you know, they don't realize that their parent, their friends of their parents could be their person they're going to hire. So how they're acting around their friend's parents or 
their teachers at school that may need to give them a referral. That is a brand as well. And so they, you know, they don't, they're not thinking about that. If they, if they don't use manners, we all know who our kids hang out with, if we're like, oh, that's a good kid, or that's not a good right. kid. I mean, we know. And so, yeah, if someone came into my office that was a friend of my kids that I, that did not have good manners, I'd talk to them about it, you know? And so building that personal brand, not just online, because I think a lot of them have learned, hey, even though I snap, this is going to come back to me. You know, I realize I snapped a picture and I've snapped it to a friend. They're going to screenshot it. So they're going the opposite and not posting a lot of stuff on their grid or whatever that looks like. So they're trying to be more mindful of those things, but they're doing other stuff. You know, they're just, you don't want to raise that punk kid. So you're definitely, we're talking to them about what that brand looks like as well. Yeah. And it's so hard, I think, today more. I mean, I honestly don't yes. envy my kids because they there is so much that they face that you, the three of us did not face growing up. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, I mean, kids can be downright mean nowadays, way more. You know, before it would just be a name. Now it's a name attached to you become a meme. And then every, everybody yes. in school has seen it. And then, you know, it's just, it is really rough. So, you know, I'd be curious to know in, as you've gotten this skills lab training program off the ground, and maybe you've kind of talked to some of your peers around the country, is there anything unique that our kids being in, here in the Ozarks here in Northwest Arkansas are dealing with that maybe they're not dealing with in other parts of the country? Well, we talked to some kids, you know, some people, there's a lot of We have a lot of resources available to us here in Northwest Arkansas. One from, you know, working with Fortune One companies, you know, you're exposed to high caliber people everywhere you turn. You have world-class museums. You have these great outdoors. So we are really privileged to grow up in I Am Northwest Arkansas. You know, by talking to people in the area, how great this area is, little, our perfect little town. But that being said, a lot of stuff is right here at our fingertips. You know, if you decide you want to go to the U of A, you've got a whole Walton school there that's just so great. And then you flip that around, you drive four hours south and you're in a different part of Arkansas that doesn't have all these great resources and it's a more rural area. And you're finding that, you know, they're not worried about making the ACT. They're worried about how their family is going to be fed next week. You know, they're just trying to make enough money so their mom doesn't have to work four jobs, you know. So we're seeing that there are different things just in the state of Arkansas. What we're finding is that we are really exposed to a lot of resources. You know, if you're trying to find a mentor, you'll be able to find some really talented ones. And, and, you know, the Bentonville High School is offering internships with the world's largest retailer. I mean, that is exciting and you're not seeing that everywhere you go. So Really having a strong community, we're seeing more local organizations within communities trying to offer some training or some leadership classes. And there, again, we just go back to there's just not enough manpower. So we really were trying to create a program that allowed us to get into schools and to talk to those kids who maybe weren't planning on going to college, their parents didn't go to college, but yet they still need to get out and make a living. And what does that, what sets them apart? from everybody else that's interviewing for that. And it could be they didn't chew gum at the interview or they followed back up with a thank you note or, you know, just some of those simple one-on-one things that we would take for granted. So we're seeing that. Christy, did you want to add anything? No, we were really passionate about meeting kids where they're at and helping them to discover their passions and interests and goals and not just being a a college prep type of, of an organization. So really realizing that there's a lot of different career paths out there. Obviously, we've seen all the different career paths people can take and the different roads to get there. And if you know college is not your bag right now, then how can we help you be intentional about your path and what the plan looks like for you? And if it's college a few years down the road, how can we help you use the time in between to be very intentional and to whether that's additional skills you need, workforce training, how to enter the workforce with some skills and confidence under your belt. You know, so we really, really try and meet students where they're at. So, and to that point, we've seen just across our own state, it's a wide variety. Yeah. You know, and I think it's, uh, I think one of the things that we, and this is, a, 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 I think an issue that we struggle with in this country as a whole is that sometimes we don't place enough value on 
all the different opportunities that are out there, right? Because for a lot of young people, it's like, they're like, if I don't go to school, if I don't go to college, I am less than. And the same person that's looking at the trades, it's like, man, if I go to the trades, people are always going to be looking down on me. And I'm thinking, if you go to the trades, you could theoretically make way more money than anybody coming out of college ever would. If it was, if that was the bottom line of it and just how much money you could make, you know, I'd be sending a lot of people to the trades. It's a challenge that we're in this country we're facing is how to frame that conversation to get young people really thinking about the bigger picture. I know when I lived in Boston, I worked with a guy that did some training and I would come in and talk and encourage his young people, but he had a, a bunch of kids that they knew they never wanted to go to college but they wanted to work and they wanted to work hard and they wanted to work with excellence. And he worked to train them on being sheet metal workers and welders because that's a, that's, a, that's a really valuable commodity uh, from a trades perspective. And some of these kids came out of school after their basic training making you know 40 and 50 bucks an hour. You can do the math and know that that's, you know, that's, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And there are a lot of people that will go through and matriculate through college and never make nearly that amount on an hourly basis. So I tell young people that will listen that, you know, the sky is the limit and there's all kinds of opportunities available, but I just tell them to get some proper training and get some proper mentoring because without that, you're always going to be, you know, at a deficit when it comes to being prepared for what the future holds. So, I mean, I think what you guys are doing is we need like 50 Beths and 50 Christies to do this work on a regular basis, right? Because I'm sure <laughs> that every high school in the state would want you in there and, you know, maybe not physically in there, but, you know, virtually meeting with their kids and encouraging them and having these conversations early and often because they're just not being had enough. And you brought up something earlier, Beth, about some of the challenges that a lot of families face, not just here in, in Arkansas, but elsewhere of just struggling to survive. So if I'm struggling to survive, the last thing that I'm thinking about is preparing my kid for the future. I'm trying to deal with my future. And that's just that's just right. the reality that we're dealing with. So, I mean, you it's there's a lot of work out there. Yeah, I think so. And I know the schools are doing everything that they can do and this going to a trade um school or even going into the military, there is different paths like Christy was saying for for everybody. We know what that looks like in terms of people who have college degrees you know, what their income is going to be over a lifetime. We know that the majority of the positions that we hire require degrees. So we know that that's going to knock out a lot of students. But, you know, we, at the end of the day, they're still making a contribution and they can be very successful life and a career. And so we're trying to help them. We always use the example of if you're working at the coffee shop, okay, you love working at the coffee shop. What's the next step for you? Have you thought about managing the coffee shop? Have you thought about managing coffee shops? Have you thought about opening up your... So we continue to have those conversations. What do you like? What do you not like? Do you understand how a budget works? Do you understand how inventory management works? And so there's steps to kind of go through all of that. And we're happy to have whatever the conversation needs to to happen through those things. Right. The steps to prepare for your career and your next job and advancement are and the same, whether you're coming out of college or you're coming out of high school, whether you're trying to be the supervisor at the coffee shop or you're interviewing for a teaching position at a school. So having a college degree or not, there's still these fundamental skills that students need in order to interview for their next job, beat out the competition, present themselves well and with confidence. And so you could focus on those with every state in America and have a a well-trained workforce. And that's what we hear from a lot of the employers, especially in Arkansas, as we've been having conversations with a variety of agencies that are interviewing the workforce and what they're looking for in hiring people. Their biggest need is for people who just present themselves well, who will show up for their shift, who will make commitments and keep them when they accept a job, who are ready and willing to take on the next stage in their job or to look at the supervisor position to, you know, and they're, they're trained and confident enough to do that. So it's, there's the fundamental skills that people need, but I, what we're hearing from the workforce is more than that. They just want people who are, who understand how to be a good employee, how to present themselves well to even get the job. And then they could train them 
on pretty much anything from there. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, and it's important. I think sometimes people just need to hear that because, you know, we, we take this as assumption that common sense is common, but common sense is not as common as we think it is. And there is, you know, I've talked to, I've, one of the things that I've really been fortunate is to interview a lot of small business owners here in the Northwest Arkansas community, especially restaurant owners. And I always relate to them, my experience growing up waiting tables at a young age, actually being able to serve alcohol even before I was legal, legally able to. But back in New Jersey, back in the day, I don't think they really monitored that. Thank God. But anyway, I learned some skills at a young age at 14 and 15 of, of waiting tables and working with customers and, and just understanding the whole mindset behind selling food and upselling and all that. I mean, there were just so many little lessons, life lessons that I learned throughout that process that, I mean, I was, by the time I got to college and I waited tables, I was killing it. And, you know, I always, I told my kids, I said, I, I want all of you guys to wait tables because I think it teaches some special life lessons about mm -hmm. understanding, you know, the value that you bring to the situation. Because I knew that, you know, if I can sell $2,000, $2,500 worth of food at a, a night, then I bring value to the equation. And it's not just, oh, I'm just checking in and checking out at the end of the night. No, I'm bringing value to this restaurant owner. And, you know, if it's reciprocated, it works out. And I think young people need to understand that, that there is a direct correlation to what they bring to the table and what ultimately comes back to them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's having those experiences like you did that helped you to see that direct correlation. And it helped you to see, man, my buddy working the other part of the restaurant is killing it and he is making so much money. And how is he doing that? I need to imitate some of those things that I'm seeing. And that, gosh, if I do that same thing, it results in more money for me at the end of the night. And so if students are not having those experiences early and often, and you can get those through employment, you can also get them through volunteering, you know, those are right, you can get them through job shadowing, having great mentors. Those are things that we tout with our clients all the time. There's free ways to get those kinds of experiences. It's not just having a job that can show you those values. And gosh, how do I capitalize on those when it's the most important? Oh my God. And, and you know, you're absolutely right about that. And, and it, it's the R word that I always use, which is relationships. And I try to teach my sons more often than not. And I apologize for co-opting this interview, but relationships are so important, right? And young people need to understand that. And one of the things that I drive home to my kids every day is, you know, what relationships did you build today? I explain to them that they need to have strong relationships with their teachers. Not that they necessarily need to love them, right? Because I, we never, I mean, you guys growing up didn't love all your teachers, but there were some that you liked. But that relationship is important because, you know, they're in control of your grades. They're in control of a number of things that while you study and work hard, you still need help from them. And it's the same thing in, in everything that we do. So even if you're not working a job where you're working and getting paid, even if you're volunteering your time and effort, you're out there building a relationship with someone that could eventually take your ability to work with them, even if it's for free, and leverage that and say, man, I like the way Sue worked with me. I like the way Bob worked with me. I want to offer them something else. And a lot of times people, young people specifically, don't always connect those dots. And I think it's important. And you guys probably do a really good job of helping young people to connect that kind of dot because those to me are the little things that pay off in the long run. And it's you start earning that equity, that sweat equity that manifests itself in a, in a lot of new opportunities that would have never come your way had people not seen you put your best foot forward, even if there wasn't pay on the line. Exactly. And the, the relationships and those um, experiences as well. Students are, we often help them to see the value of the experiences that they like and don't like. So take stock of those experiences you're getting that you just did not jive with. And whether that was, I like to work behind a desk or I hate to work behind a desk. I need to work out on a floor with people where I'm moving around all the time. So all those things are so valuable and they all mold into what makes you tick, what makes you happy, it's really going to use your energy and your passion the best each day. And then how does that translate into a career? And so we kind of draw draw the big spider web together in the center for them of all those experiences and relationships and things that they've seen throughout their high school and college years. And you know, how do you make that work for you the best so that it's it, so that it results in something lifelong for you and not 
someone who's sitting in our office at 45 that just wants to restart and go back to that passion that they always knew they had, but they just, you know, followed with a career that was easy in front of them. Well, I mean, and then then that's even a different type of consulting or, you know, encouragement, right? For people that hit midlife crisis, because that's a whole nother ball of wax there. So, you know, young people have to know that this is not a one and done type thing. If you prepare yourself now, you may still have to go through this later in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's just, it's the evolution of life. I mean, we're constantly Mm -hmm. iterating and getting better and figuring things out. And even at 51, I'm figuring some things out, you know, that you figure, oh, well, Mm -hmm. you're 50 plus, you've got it all figured out. There's no 50 year old out there that says they have it all figured out. So, you know, so I say that to the young people, because if nothing else, that should give them an ability to exhale a little bit and say, wow, okay, if this old dude doesn't have it quite figured out, then maybe there's hope for me. Right. (laughs) I think that's just the reality. So I totally agree. So listen, Beth, Christy, if I'm a parent listening to this episode and I'm thinking, man, I need to have Beth and Christy talk to my daughter, talk to my son or talk to their class or whatever, what's the best way for people to connect with you? And, and how does that currently work right now, given everything else that's going on? They can definitely, the best way to connect with us initially is to go to our website, skillslabtraining.com. And you'll find our contact information on there to reach out to us via phone or email. Um, social media is also a great way to connect with us. We're very active on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and just posting a lot of great tips. So if you're thinking, man, this is something I want to keep in the back of my brain for when my kid is a few years down the road as a junior or a senior in high school, maybe it's a little too early for your child right now, then follow us on social media. There's a ton of great tips that we put on there all the time and just information that can really start getting your brain kind of moving in a certain direction and and just helping you as a parent. We tailor a lot of stuff for parents out there. And so that's a great way to connect with us and, and just keep us on your radar and just start to educate yourself as well. And then we're always very happy to talk with parents and or students about what are your needs? How can we tailor something that will be the best for your student? And we don't want to be intimidating at all. We want this to be just a great open kind of coffee conversation with people and make it as comfortable as possible. So we welcome you to reach out to us and and we'll be happy to talk about those specifics. Okay. I love that. Yeah. And you guys also have a high school and college newsletter that people can sign up for on your website. So I really want to encourage anybody listening to go to uh, skillslabtraining.com and sign up for their newsletter because that will at least, if nothing else, keep you up to date on everything that they're doing because, uh, it could be beneficial for you. Yeah, yes. exactly. With Thank lots you. of great tips that yeah. come out in there every month. So we appreciate that. It's, we feel like it's a lot of good stuff, whether you have kids in their early teens or you've got someone about to graduate from college or a grandchild even going to graduate from college or high school. And you're thinking, what could I do for them that would just kind of be a lifelong pursuit or gift for them rather than a variety of other things that you could be racking in your brain. So definitely take a look at us, whether it's your a parent, a student, a grandparent, I'm happy to help. Perfect. I love that. So last but not least, because w- I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up, but we are in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, I mean, out when you're not encouraging the next generation of young people to go out and be the best version of themselves, how do you guys have fun, both Beth and Christy? It might be a favorite watering hole, favorite restaurant, something that you like to do here in Northwest Arkansas that's unique here to the Ozarks. Well, I was, um, I am a native of Northwest Arkansas. So I was born and raised here and have been here my entire life. So obviously I love Northwest Arkansas and I've seen it grow over the decades. One of my favorite things to do is I love the outdoors. So we love camping. I frequent the state parks in this area during the spring and summer and fall. And so I love the camping, hiking. I've recently gotten into fishing a little bit with my kids and yeah, so that's what I love to do when I'm not. Recruiting. Have you ever hiked or, or camped in Devil's Den? Yeah, I did just a couple weeks oh, ago. I was hiking in Devil's great, Den. Great, great, mm-hmm. awesome, awesome. How about you, Beth? Well, I, my kids are a little bit older than Christy's now, so they're right in the middle of sports. I've got one who plays volleyball and the other one who plays hockey. So we are constantly doing that in Northwest Arkansas. But our favorite thing to do as a family is try new restaurants, and so we've been, you know. 
out and about and trying new places. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, Besides the outdoor activities, but yes. Well, restaurant. I'm going to put you on the spot then. What What's the one restaurant that you've been back to a few times since the start of the pandemic because you enjoy the food? Well, since the start of the p- pandemic, we haven't been going out very often. We did try a new fried chicken place just this weekend that we will definitely be going back to. William Soul Food. I don't know yes. if you've tried that. It's in Bentonville. Yep. It is so good. So that will, we will, I see many trips in that, in our future for that. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, no, we, we haven't been going out to eat a whole lot, but we've sure gotten, gotten comfortable with takeout. Yes. Everything is takeout. Yes. So, you know. Yes. Yeah. It's our favorite thing. Oh, yeah, thing. absolutely. You got to love that. So I think there's so much that to offer here uh, from a culinary standpoint in Northwest Arkansas. A lot of people don't realize that. Yes. So, you know, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's one of our best kept secrets. So. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on the podcast and and, and just just sharing with us, uh, you know, your heart and what you're trying to do to change the next generation and not so much change them, but more encourage them, right? I mean, I always tell my son, he's going to be, you're going to be who you are, but I want you to be the best version of that. And I think you guys are doing a great job doing that. So if anybody listening to this is not from this area, but moving here, just know that there are a lot of opportunities here to continue to develop and mold your young people if you're bringing them here with you to relocate to Northwest Arkansas. And if you're already here, please look up Beth and Christy, check them out. Tell them that you heard about them first here on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. And uh, guys, we really appreciate having you on. We Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Well, folks, that's another episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. To learn more about us or to read or download the show notes from today's episode, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. You can listen to this podcast or sign up for free for our free newsletter to keep up with us and all things NWA. Sign up today. You can also subscribe to the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. And please consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Our podcast does come out every Monday, so we really encourage you to check it out. And I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. We'll see you back here next week for a new episode of the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.